nice, nice to meet you guys. This is a, this is a fantastic movie. Uh, I would not consider myself a huge Superman or Christopher Reeve fan or anything. Mm -hmm. I was just like, I just thought I was in tears. This movie kind of like I was in tears the whole movie. <laughs> Very, very embarrassing when you're sitting and watching in a theater. <laughs> I'm sure as heard. long as everybody else feel, feel the same, then you're fine. Yeah, I guess that's true. That's true and that's yeah. the beauty of it. I mean, we, we want, we want this, this we, it was our ambition to have, that this film has a collective, uh, has a theatrical life because there's such value in the communal experience of sharing emotion, we feel, that as, you know, Irreplaceable. Uh, irreplaceable. And, mm. you, and and that was the wonderful thing about Warner coming on board is that they so supported our ambition for it, uh, that it wasn't just going to go onto a streamer. It was actually going to have a proper theatrical life, which is rare these days for a documentary. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I missed it at Sundance. I'm not going to be able to make the premiere tomorrow, unfortunately. So oh. I just saw it with a, I still saw it with a, with a group of people. But uh, so, so how do you guys get involved? I mean, obviously you did the, the Alexander McQueen movie. You've done Rising Phoenix, which are, I mean, very, kind of different. I and mean, Rising Phoenix is definitely different. But I mean, this, this is a, you know, this is a person who's passed away, who, who had this really 10 years of really, really tough, you know, hardship. Um, so did you reach out to the family? Did they reach out to you? Had this kind of been in the works? But you, you know? go back to, 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 you know, to our previous work, we feel that McQueen, which is a biopic about an artist in the world of fashion, but which had a tragic ending, and then Rising Phoenix, which is about the Paralympic, so of, you know, which is obviously sports oh, for sure. people with disability, kind of got us, you know, we were kind of ready. And I think those two films were shown to the children when our names were floating around about potential directors that they should maybe meet that could tell the story. I think for them, it was, you know, that's a question for them, but I've heard them saying it was a kind of a no brainer. They could see aspect of, you know, mm. their father's legacy through McQueen and us, the way we, we, we tackle the issues of with disability and never thought of it as something to be, you know, ashamed of or put aside. It's actually something to be celebrated and needs to be put in the in the forefront of our conversation so uh, then we basically got to meet them the, the project was the money wasn't there but they needed to have directors to drive the the creative um so you know many people these days if they're going to invest in your movie they need to have a clear vision they need to know who is going to be behind the, the that vision and who is going to actually um achieve that vision so we met we got on very well we I think had a little bit of a crush. We 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 felt really connected. There's a lot of things we shared, um, except Will. But Al and Matt, I've got kids. They've got they're very family driven. We are similar ourselves, and it just it just felt right. And and then it was just about us as well, knowing what they wanted to do with it, where they wanted to just make a celebrity film about their father and just about the filmography where they're ready to go into the difficult parts and, and talk about the, the difficult elements and not to make a um, hegemony out of, uh, out of um, Chris, which is so easily doable. He was such an amazing Superman, such a great man, but we wanted to explore all of the failures and all the difficult parts. But yeah, then we just, you know, when we got on, we just get on with the film. How, how many years ago was that? I mean, I can't remember what year Dana passed away, but it wasn't. She passed away like not too long after he did, right? Two thousand and six. Two thousand six. So okay, he right. was two thousand and four. He was gotcha. two thousand. Uh, she was two thousand and six. Uh, we first talked to the, 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 the Matthew Alexandra and Will about the film in April twenty twenty one two. two? So a couple of years ago, I mean, okay. you know, it, 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 we like working quickly. I think all of our films we've taken sort of like between a year and 18 months to make. We don't like sort of like, because then you, it forces you to work a little bit more from the gut and from your instinct mm. and be, you know, make decisions and not agonize over things too much. And and we find that's a very kind of like good creative practice to have. And we work with uh, Otto uh, Burnham, our editor, uh, who's done two of our films. In fact, you know, two and a half of our films, um, and uh, and he works in a similar way. And we, we, yeah, we 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 like driving things quite quickly. So once we committed, and the kids had committed to us and given us their trust, they didn't seek to to interfere or influence in 
anything with the creative vision once they decided that they were going to give us their trust. Um, and once we go on with it, it just went like a like a rocket, really, um, which is how we like it. Where do you begin? Do you begin by sitting down with the, with the kids and interviewing them? Or no. Do, do we, they just have a lot of footage that, that you can go through and a lot of things we, to go through? We begin by ones. coming up with a bit of a plan. You know, we... We're both from a background um, in long form and short form, but not necessarily documentary, journalist-driven storytelling. So uh, storytelling is is just intrinsic to us, and we like to kind of like start on the film, knowing that we have a roadmap, um, a particular vision for how we're going to tell the story. In this case, it was how we're going to interfere, inter interweave his life before and after the accident. And once we had that, that that really enabled us to start thinking, well, who beyond the three kids, who would we want to interview? What kind of archive are we looking for? So we didn't get overwhelmed by the fact we had literally hundreds and hundreds of hours mm. of amazing, unique archive, because we sort of knew the kinds of things we might be looking for. Mm. And then and the then interviews. Go ahead. Yeah. But, you yeah, know, but, you know, it's, it's very much that. I think it's very dangerous uh, at least for us, um, to just rock up somewhere and just start filming. You need to have a clear idea. There's there's this misinterpretation or mis misconstruction, mis misconstruction. Yeah, of the fact that documentary is just observational. We're very subjective in a way. We're very crafting. So, but the first three interviews were actually um, uh, Matt and Al were two of the first interview. We interviewed Will as the fourth interviewee. And that gave us the skeleton of the uh, of the story. And, you know, we could already see some of the emotional impact we could have. But as Peter said, there's not only the interviews which are important, there's the visual side, there's the music, there's how we're gonna treat everything. So we, we, we approach everything. We conceptualize a lot of the things. We don't stumble in the dark. You know, it's not, you know, we're not like fiction where we have a full script with the scene but we have a very, very strong blueprint of what we want to do. And actually, everyone said us, said it, you know, the financier need to see something on paper because they're investing on that vision. If that vision is like, trust us, we're just great, and we're going to go off and film loads of stuff, it's they need to feel that, oh, my God, yeah, that's an interesting thing. And especially in that case, with the accident at that moment, everyone was a bit scared of like, or you would have half of the film where he's standing, he's strong, he's a superhero, everything goes well, this moment, and then afterwards he's in, in, in a wheelchair. How are you going to sort it out? You know, you two, meaning us. And I think we needed to prove how we wanted to go about it. Hmm. That's really interesting because when they talk about uh, documentary, there's always this, this writing credit. Which people like always wonder about, it. and you consider the writing credit. I mean, I always consider when the writing is being taking place in the edit, where you're when you're editing and you edit, have all the materials and you edit together, and you're kind of writing out. But you're just saying you actually had that in advance, and you kind of were kind of filling in the gaps what you what you wanted to tell. To so some degree, I mean, well, you know, it's not like a full, as Ian says, it's not like a full feature film screenplay, but it might be like you know there'll be. I think with this film, there were like three different documents. There was a a first initial pitch and then there was a much more detailed once we'd really thought about it and looked at some of the research and started looking at our started looking at some of the, the archive we sort of like then had a more definite plan which was to interweave the, the stories and then there was a, a a third document that was very much about how 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 we were going to try and make these segues between post and pre-accident work um and how we felt it was very important to keep Superman, you know, um, at, present. The, at present throughout the story, um, you know, uh, and leading certain episodes of Christopher's previous life. So you would relate the fact that he, um, his, his relationship with Gay fell apart with the fact that he was becoming increasingly disillusioned because of the way he was being typecast as Superman. So he was running away both from Superman and his family, in a sense. Um, and he, he all kind of, So we, we really think about the detail of that and start looking within the archive. The, 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 the thing is that, as Ian says, it's not like a, a feature film screenplay. You, you then, 
find these wonderful accidents and things you didn't know about or archive that is just like extraordinary and you can't possibly ignore it. So you have to keep adapting your original um, your original plan so it can accommodate the pros what you discover in the process of making the film. But if you look at the credits, um, our, our editors got a co a co writer Sorry. credit. So I, we feel that in the room, uh, Peter has got a background as a screenwriter as well. So he took a lead on that, and then we brainstormed. But in the room, we all kind of co-creators in, in that uh, sense. Absolutely. Yeah. And we have, our, I mean, our edit, I, I think this is true for a lot of um, documentary edits, but for us, the, the, the whole thing of three by five index cards that we move around sure. constantly. Mm -hmm. um, a, 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 and then also sometimes we will literally sort of like go back to the transcripts and write scenes. Um, so th it's a, it's, it's a, it is a process of writing, you know, a, a, as well. Right? And that structure that we, um, we applied, we borrowed it from the book that the, you know, the autobiography that not exactly, but that Chris had written still me, we could see that even in his book, he didn't want to just talk about disability. He just, he came one chapter was about the early years and et cetera. So we thought oh, that, you know, that sort of work, that's kind of things. And how can we make it even, how can we elevate? How can we uh, build from that? It's a literary thing with Chris, and we needed to find something that was really cinematic by comparison. Yeah. We, we, we began this uh, by talking about the, the emotional impact of this movie and on people. Uh, how has it been for the family? Uh, were they able to go to Sundance and watch it? Were they able to watch it just in the screening room and watch it? I mean, how, how yeah. tough is this for them to watch this movie? You know, I mean, be reminded of that's a question for them, but I think, sure. <laughs> um, I think they were dreading, you know, they, they really loved the film. So when we showed it to them, they had a few comments, etc. but they felt very reassured and they felt they had made the right decision in choosing us two Muppets here. But um, when they were facing, I, I remember because we spent a day as well doing press the day before the, um, the you know, the, the, yeah, the, the premiere at Sundance. Um, it was really, you know, it was suddenly they were opening the can to the rest of the world. But they had decided to make it. They hadn't been forced. It's not that, you know, we were mischievous producers twisting trying their twisting arm. their arms and, you know, begging them to do it. They were ready to do it. They wanted to do it. They just needed the right people to do it. So they were safe in this. You know, it was their own decision. It was their own, uh, they had their own, um, yeah, they had their own future in their own hands. But again, right now, the cinema, the film is in the cinemas, the 21st of September. A lot more people are going to watch it. And then the following week, it's rolling out in loads of European countries, in Latin America, potentially in Africa, in Asia. So they are going to be, and they know, a lot more people are going to be exposed to the film. But again, I think... They're confident that the film does just justice to their dad. There's nothing, you know, there's nothing. Right now, quite a few people have seen it and critics and journalists, and we're only getting positive out of it. So I think they're reassured and they're ready to take on that journey.